First of all, I'll sincerely thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to discuss my experience with the Al Kappa and especially the remote Al Kappa, which is extremely rare thing. And I feel fortunate enough to get these kind of patients on regular basis. So I'll discuss my experience. This is a recent image. I got it from an invitation in from World Society. It's a beautifully depicted picture of Al Kappa and very clearly seen. It's a standard Al Kappa where the coronary artery is arising from posterior sinus. We can call it as a facing sinus also. Uh, this diagram is designed by Dr. Richard Tang from Canada, Montreal specifically. Now, we all know that the, it's a very uh, low incidence of this congenital heart disease and almost 90% of the patients succumb by first years of, of age. But occasionally we can see Al Kappa even in the adult patients. I operated one patient of 44 years of age. Usually uh, the adult patient will go to adult surgeons and they will be doing CABG in our place. Now remote Al Kappa, if we'll discuss on following headings, if the Al Kappa, I consider these Al Kappas if it is arising from the non-facing sinus. If the alkappa is arising from the right pulmonary artery and left main atresia. Left main atresia, of course, it is not alkappa, but I always discuss because I had really tough time to deal with this left main atresia. Now, these are the two images. I just uh, modified the image. This is the facing and the non-facing sinus. If you see this, it looks very difficult to relocate the coronary artery from the non-facing sinus to the aorta. It's very far from the aorta. This is the one which is the usual standard coronary from the facing sinus. The other one is from the non-facing sinus. And it is really, it looks very difficult to relocate. And it can be diagnosed on echocardiography also from where exactly it is arising. But it can be confirmed on the CT scan that the coronary artery is arising from the non-facing sinus. And if the surgeon is not experienced enough or for the beginners, it is really difficult to transfer the coronary from the non-facing sinus. So better to get a CT and confirm where exactly the coronary, sinus, the coronary artery is arising from. See, this is a Takayachi technique, which is most of the time is described and worldwide people accept it also that this is the best way when the coronary artery is arising from the non-facing sinus to create a tunnel inside the pulmonary artery using a prosthetic material or a native pulmonary artery tissue. So they create a... Um, tunnel and create a aortopulmonary window between the aorta and pulmonary artery. But I practically have no experience of Takayaji tunnel. Whatever I have seen is that, that post-operatively they have supravalvular stenosis, follow-up they have a supravalvular stenosis, pulmonary regurgitation all this also. And see, this is one of my infant. I did only three cases of coronary from the non-facing sinus, where it was arising from the non-facing sinus with little bit of extra dissection of the left coronary artery and creating a flap, a flap on the aorta. If you create a flap on the aorta and take a full tissue around the left coronary artery, you can transfer it like a tunnel. So this is non-facing and can be transferred without any extra efforts. Now, second is a very interesting thing when sometimes you get a case of alkappa and you find that the coronary artery is arising from the right pulmonary artery. And if you see the literature, there are only 44 cases are described in the literature of this variant of Alkapa. And various techniques also have been described for this patient. In my experience, there were 11 cases which I have come across with this disease, and nine of them I operated. So this is actual picture. You see the coronary arteries arising from the base of the right pulmonary. It's a junction of the main pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. And once it is arising, it may enter into the aorta, traversing entirely inside the aorta and then coming out like a normal coronary artery. And sometimes it is difficult to diagnose also, but if a echocardiographer is good, then he can identify whether the, uh, there is a flow reversal in the coronary artery and the reverse flow is going into the right pulmonary artery. It can be picked up very easily on the echo. And nowadays, whatever I am getting is that it's very clearly demonstrated that the coronary artery is arising from the under surface of the right pulmonary artery and the main pulmonary artery junction. So it can be identified by the echocardiography by flow reversal in the right pulmonary artery. Again, the CT scan 
is it confirm the diagnosis? See here, the artery is arising from the base of the right pulmonary artery, and it seems that it is running outside the aorta. It is not going inside the aorta. Posteriorly, it is running outside the wall of the aorta. So their presentation of all variants are different. And because of that, their surgical techniques also has to be different. Now, this is one of the paper I, I mean, we have published about the Alcarpa. Here you can see the coronary arteries arising from the right pulmonary artery, but you're not sure whether it is going inside the wall of the aorta or it is traversing outside the wall of the aorta. Last figure also, when you can see it looks as if it is traversing outside the wall of the aorta, but it was entering inside the wall of the aorta. Basically, uh, this subset present, in my experience, these variants present in three types. Number one, it is arising from the junction of main and the right pulmonary artery. And after its origin, it is entering into the wall of the aorta and traversing inside the wall of the aorta. I'll, and these are the better pictures. You can see this is arising from right pulmonary artery, entering in the aorta and coming out as a normal course. The course in the aorta is intramural. The second and the third image looks exactly same. The only difference is in the first one, there is a flimsy adhesion between the coronary artery and the wall of the aorta. Whereas in number two, the, wall, the coronary artery is firmly adherent. It is firmly adherent to the wall of the aorta and it is difficult. You can endure it. And this you cannot anticipate by any investigation. Even the CT scan will not tell you whether it can be separated from the aorta or not. It is difficult to predict. So one has to be prepared for these things. So these are the three variants which I have seen so far. Then the one indication, suppose you don't know the diagnosis, then in Alcarpa, you see extensive collateral between the right pulmonary artery and the aorta. If you see that area, you find the extensive collateral. That gives you a hint. Otherwise, the operative techniques are centered, division of the PDA, dissection of aorta and pulmonary artery, cardioplegia through both aorta and pulmonary artery. And one thing which, which is basic for, basically for the beginners, that after giving the cardioplegia, after, of course, after snugging the branch pulmonary artery, you divide the anterior half of the main pulmonary artery and please inspect for the coronary artery, whether it is arising from the non-facing sinus, number one, or it is arising from the facing sinus, or it is arising from the right pulmonary artery. And there was an occasion when I could not find any coronary artery arising from the pulmonary artery. There was no coronary artery from the anywhere from the pulmonary artery. I thought it's uh, probably I'm mid dealing with some cardiomyopathy and uh, I just closed off and went back to ICU. And the ICU, the cardiologist is good, good. He has immediately demonstrated the flow reversal in the coronary artery. And also almost 15, 16 back that I, I was, I never heard the term left main atresia. So next time we have, because he was demonstrating, we have to plan for the surgery. And I asked him to show the angiogram. We were not having CT scan that time. So when the angiogram was done, we could see that it is just the arteries, just short of aorta. It was pulmonary artery, atresia, and we lost this patient. Now, this is the technique, what I explained, that uh, if you know the diagnosis before, just transect the aorta, and you can very clearly see the, the coronary artery arising from the right pulmonary artery and entering into the aorta. And it is difficult from aorta to identify that it is traversing and where exactly it is traversing, or you try to unroof inside the aorta, it is difficult. You have to probe it, not only probe it, you have to just cut through that opening on, cut down till the base of it. When you reach the base, you can see a wide opening, a wide opening of the left main coronary artery. So exactly what you need to do is just unroof the coronary artery and you are the left coronary artery, it is your original place. And just resuture the aorta and patch the right pulmonary artery. This is one of the image where the coronary artery is arising from the right pulmonary artery and then it is entering into the aorta. Of course, after unroofing, you have to reinforce the edges so re-endothelize the edges so there's no thrombus formation. Then this is one of the patients where the coronary artery is arising from the right pulmonary artery, but it was extramural. I told this is the second variant where you can separate the pulmonary artery and when where you can separate the coronary artery from the aorta. And I believe this is the only indication where you should transfer the coronary artery as a button. I went through the literature. There are cases where people have unroofed the coronary artery and then transferred as a button also. 
I don't see any reason once you have unroofed the coronary artery, the ostium is already in the sinus. There's no point. You can just excise that button. There's no point in transferring that button. So this is the only variant where the coronary artery is extramural. You can separate with the cautery and then you can transfer it with the, transfer it like a button. This, this was the coronary artery. It is separable from the ascending artery. Now, th this was the coronary artery. This was one can, this aorta, this pulmonary artery, it can be separated and it can be transferred as a button using a trapdoor. Now, this is third variant. And I, I, when I really get into trouble, this is the variant where the coronary artery is firmly adherent to the ascending aorta. You cannot separate it. Maybe after a millimeter or two, you dissect it and separate for two millimeter. And after that, you realize if you further try to separate, you are going to hit the coronary artery. So now in this situation, if you turn, it is 180 degree turn of the coronary artery. It is 100% going to kink. So on table, I modified this technique to turn this button, to turn this button upside down. And the only thing one precaution has to take, one has to go, the incision has to go slightly down maybe 1.5 to 2 millimeter. There won't be any kink. The, the artery can be just flipped and there won't be any kink. We have done three such cases. All of them did well. So this is something new, which I am recently done few cases. Then surgical technique, I already told this unroofing is one. It avoid any kind of kinking. There's no kinking in the coronary artery and the ostium is lying in its natural place. The transfer, there's a, if you transfer the coronary artery as a button, there's a chances of kinking. Not only kinking, the coronary artery will be above the sinus of well seen. And where the coronary flow is not normal, number two, the intramural portion will always be there inside the hypertensive aorta. So that problem is lifelong to be there. And turning the button upside down, which I'm very happy till now with this technique. Results of Alcarpa. In fact, we have come across the 11 cases of Alcarpa. Uh, five patients I did unroofing, three patients I flipped it, and one patient there was an extramural course, and I believe the extramural course is the only indication where one should transfer the, it as a button. Otherwise, there is no need to transfer it as a button. And this is again one of the interesting cases. I don't call exactly it is Alcarpa, but it is a hemitruncus with VSD where the right coronary artery was arising from the same patient where the right coronary artery was arising. Uh, I'm sorry, left coronary artery was arising from the right pulmonary artery. Technically, there, I have not done anything for this Alcarpa. Just uh, relocated the right pulmonary artery and the VSD closer. So this, and this is another interesting case. I just show it for the fact that there's an Alcapa associated with AP window. Very few cases. It is only for those who just directly ligate the AP window. If you try to ligate in the AP window in such situation, you can get into a very big trouble. This is Alcapa with double LED. When a long, long LED which was arising from RCA and a small LED which was arising from pulmonary artery, which we transferred like a standard Alcapa. And this is what Alcapa. This is Al. Sorry, Alcarpa. 14 year old boy, he has come to me for a second opinion and I told him that we'll be transferring this coronary artery after cutting um, the edge and they didn't opt for the surgery, they went for CAVG. So CAVG was done for this 14 year old boy, the same patient. And this is how I do, I did three cases of left main, in fact, two cases of left main atresia. First time I couldn't understand what I'm dealing with. Second patient died after three or four days of surgery. And the third patient survived, but he's lost to follow up after seven months. Basically, you just have posterior to the main pulmonary artery, you see a bulbous end, bulbous end of the left coronary artery. And if you cut this bulbous end, there will be tremendous return will be coming from that. And then once you cut this, you can transfer it like a normal proximal anastomosis. It's a thick, large bulbous end. You can just transfer it like a proximal coronary artery anastomosis. The results, I one patient we could not diagnose, second died after three days, and the, and the third one we lost to follow up after seven months. I will not speak much about the left ventricle function because left ventricle function will take time to recover, especially if you operate in early infancy, the left ventricle will recover faster. And if you operate in late, late infancy, there's no left to right shunt, then in that case, there's a scar tissue burden. 
left ventricle will take time to recover. But I am seeing the patient, the left ventricle function is improving even after 10 years of surgery. Mitral regurgitation, uh, there is a still a controversy whether one should go and uh, repair the mitral valve in Alcapa or not. And initially, I used to think that mitral valve function should recover, but I'm in late infancy if the kids are coming after six months. And even if there is a moderate MRI, I try to do with the posterior suture annual plasty. And most of them, patient will have a good post-operative course, especially when tachycardia and everything settled, they can be extubated properly. So mitral valve repair, I'm a bit aggressive, especially if the patient isn't presenting in the left late infancy. So uh, confirm, I will just only say, confirm the, uh, to conclude the talk that please confirm the alcapa after cutting the anterior half of the main pulmonary artery exactly where it is. This is especially for the beginners because you may not even come across the alcapa when you're cutting. So just being very careful. Sudden, if there is a sudden LV dysfunction in any of the left to right shunt, you operate ASD, VSD, PD, and there is suddenly left ventricle dysfunction, which is not explainable, please think of the alcapa. It's common. I've come across where ASD closure was done, and after a clean second MSD closure, there was a left ventricular dysfunction, and after three or four days of investigation, we come to know there was alcapa. Thank you. Thank you very much.